previously on Grass Rats Garage. You know what? I think between these two generators, I might be able to build my shrinking machine. Shrinking machine? What kind of harebrained idea you got now, Pa? That's never gonna work. Oh, look who's here, your favorite person, Uncle Andy. What? Oh, he's here? Oh, it's about to go down right now, Daryl. <laughs> Uncle Andy! doing slippers me it's Kerwin D slippers the ace to you Andy I'm sent some more I still in these slips what are you mad or something yeah Andy I don't like you you stole my coupon book hey 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 whoa 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 what are you guys doing my slicker machine it's going haywire <laughs> Stealing my coupon book, all right? I didn't take your book. What are we gonna do with them? Oh, I think I got an idea on no. what we can do no. with them. <laughs> <laughs> now, why are you laughing? What are you gonna do with them? Oh, y'all see. <laughs> Come here, little uh, Slippy. Don't twist uh, him. He can't do it. Oh, little Andy. <laughs> Oh, look at them. They look so cute. I want to keep them, Junior. Hey, I hope you guys are good at holding your breath. Now be careful with them, Junior. Don't squish them. Oh, I'm just going to give them a bath, huh? Okay. Hope you guys like water parks. Let me go. All right, guys. No. Bye bye. Something tells me that ain't the last we've seen of Uncle Andy and Slippers. I hope so. Oh, I think they'll be back. Hello, everybody. Pterodactyl here. And today's how-to is going to be on this here. Briggs & Scranton two-piece flow jet carburetor. I'm going to show you how to take it apart, what to look for. Make sure you got all links and everything all hooked up right. But first, let's go over... A little bit here this is an old Briggs manual and in this manual they've got the different carburetors in there these are pulse jet carburetors this is a one-piece flow jet this is the two-piece flow jet and these are called vacuum jet carburetors these are real old ones And then another thing we're going to go over is this Master Parts Catalog. They only give these to dealers, but maybe you can contact Briggs & Scratton and maybe they'd send you one. Now, this is an old one, but I like to keep these paper manuals are handy. They got a wealth of information in this, in this little catalog. They got the tools and everything in it. And in here, for this carburetor, they have these taps. And these taps are for the two-piece flow jet carburetor. What's special about them is they're quarter and five sixteenths, thirty-two fine thread. Now those are special taps that you could use on these flow jets, and I'm going to show you where you would use these. And another thing you're going to need these are the real old-style screwdrivers for taking out those main nozzles in these carburetors and here's the new versions of them here in this catalog 
And if you can't don't have those or can't get those, then you need to find a bit like this that fits in them jets. Okay, let's start taking that carburetor apart. All right, first thing we're gonna go over is the throttle. See, this has got a lever operated throttle. Well, you could hook a cable to that. It might have a cable, but see, it's a real simple one. This is how it works. It's just got this throttle link that goes up to the butterfly throttle on the carburetor. And then you, this is your governor spring. And that's hooked to this governor rod here, this lever, governor lever. And it goes down to here. Now, if you wanted to add more engine speed to this motor, you bend on this tab. And when you bend on it, you're putting more tension on that spring and it's going to raise the engine speed. So that's how you raise and lower the speed on some of these engines. You just put more tension on that spring. That's what this is doing. See, there's no tension on the spring, plus it's pushing it to idle. And then when you pull on it, you know, this lever is going to pull on it and put more tension on it. So that's how that works. Now, we just removed this cover to make it easy for you to see how that works before we go taking the, the carburetor off. But, you know, you can leave the cover on and still take the carburetor off. All right, there's a couple different ways you could take this carburetor off. You could take this bolt out here and then these two here on the manifold. But the way I like to do it is I like to take this bolt out here underneath and then these two screws here and then disconnect that link and take this off. That way that spring and everything on this throttle plate stays all hooked up. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those. Okay, I took that bolt out and these two here. Then this comes off. It's got an O-ring on it, so you may have to tug on that to get it off. And then pinch off or shut off the gas and take the fuel line off. Now the carburetor just comes out. Now you just got to unhook this link. See? Now all that stays together, that throttle and everything. That's very simple. Now you're going to say, oh, okay, I know what he's going to do next. He's going to take those three screws out and separate that carburetor. Wrong! That ain't what you do first. This is the biggest mistake people make when they take this carburetor apart. They take those three screws out and separate it. When you do that, you break that nozzle that goes in there. So the first thing we're going to do is take this off. Then we're going to remove that long nozzle. Then we're going to take them three screws out. Okay, before I go taking anything apart, let's touch on a couple of things here. Here's your low speed adjustment screw. Now, when you want to put your adjustment on that, screw it all the way until it stops. Don't force it. Back it out one full turn. Here's your high speed. This is your idle screw. That's what sets your idle when it's idling. So 7 16 take this out. This is your high speed. Then you got to use that special screwdriver to get that nozzle out that's up in there. Because that fits in that nozzle real nice. Now sometimes these are seized in there and you can't get them out. So when that happens, you got to drill it out. And that's where these special Briggs only 51632 taps come in. So let's see if we can get this one out without damaging it. Oh, got lucky there. It's coming out. But if not, you got to drill it out, and then you got to chase out the rest of that brass because it's a brass nozzle. And this nozzle's got a bunch of holes and stuff drilled in it. So you're going to want to make sure those are all clean and clear. Look at those little teeny tiny holes in there. Little holes all up in here. It looks like there's some kind of booger on there. Now, we could take these three screws out and separate this from the float bowl. Okay, I removed the three screws, and then you might have to give it a light tap to break it loose from here. And then there it is. Now this carburetor is clean. But the reason you want to take this nozzle out is because this thing sticks up like this. 
through here. And it actually goes in, you know, to part of the carburetor up here. So when you try to separate it, you could break this tube off. And if you break it off, it's like, oh, now I got to go get one of them tubes. I should have just took that out first, but I didn't know it was in there. Because you don't need to replace this. This doesn't go bad. All you got to do is clean it. And then here's your float. And again, you're going to want it level. And here's the pin. Take your hinge pin out. And there's your needle. It's got the rubber tip on it. One thing you're going to want to check, make sure there's no gas in the float, so shake it. Make sure that there's no gas in there. This carburetor is pretty clean. There's nothing wrong with this one. And then you might want to get a gasket because sometimes you tear this gasket. So you're going to have to look this up and get the part number for it. Because this two-piece flow jet, they made it for a bunch of different uh, horsepower models. This is an 8 horse. You know, they got a 10 horse, 11 horse, 12 horse. You know, three horse they use these on, but they all come apart the same way. It's a very simple carburetor. So you put your new gasket on, you clean everything up, everything looks good. There's really not too much to it. You could take that screw out, spray through it if you want. And then just put it back together. Very simple carburetor. Okay, say uh, your carburetor's got a leaky needle and seat, and you want to replace that needle and seat. Well, sometimes just replacing the needle doesn't always work, and it still leaks. And you got to pull that seat out. This is where a Tarot special tool comes in again. I've, you've seen this tool in other carburetor videos I've made. It'll work on this one, too. Quarter 20 self-tapper, quarter 20 nut, and a piece of tubing. I like this one because I got my little winder in there. You just stick it over that, thread this in to the seat, and then when you tighten that nut, it'll jack that seat out of the carburetor. I'm not going to do it on this one because I don't want to ruin this seat because this carburetor is good. But that's how that pulling tool works. And then you use that little winder to see it being jacked out of there. Okay, so say you put your new needle and seat in there, you want to make sure you got a, a level float. Now you can always adjust that float level by the little metal tang that's on there. You can bend it up or down a little bit to get your right float level, but that's what you want. Got your new gasket on, say, got the float in, maybe a new float because the other one was bad. Then just stick it together. Slide it back together, put your screws in. If it's dirty, clean it best way you can. Carb spray, maybe you got you know, some of that chemical carver trader cleaner you can get at the auto parts store. Ultrasonic cleaner, that's what we use. But sometimes these different metals, Sometimes these carburetors aren't used like pure aluminum. They use a combination of metals, and sometimes some of those uh, liquid, uh, like degreasers and stuff, because I, I say to use the purple power in some of these videos, sometimes that'll leave a chalky film on there. So you got to be careful with that. Tighten them down. Got your nozzle all clean. Make sure you, you know, it's all clean this way. There ain't no crud in there. Boogers. Stick it in. Screw it back in. Maybe you had to drill it out. Tap it with them special taps. Just be careful when you're doing that. Shine lights down there. Look at everything. Screw this in. Make sure it's tight. You don't have to go crazy. This is your high-speed needle. There's an O-ring under here. You might want to check that O-ring. Maybe that O-ring's all dry rotted because this is an old motor. You know, maybe you got to replace that O-ring in there. This is important when you go to put this back together. Leave this loose. Put this in only a couple of threads. 
Because if you got this screwed in too deep and you screw this back in and tighten it down, you're going to jam that needle into that nozzle and you're going to put a big groove in the end of that needle. So leave this loose, put it back in, tighten this down, then bring your screw up to it till it stops. And don't force it. Now it's stopped there. One and a half turns, that's the starting point. That's a half. That's one. That's one and a half. If you start it and it's running and dying and needs more fuel, open it up another half a turn. You ain't going to hurt it. And then once you get it running, then you can fine tune it. Remember, it's like a water valve. You want more water, you open it. You want more gas, you open it. You want less water, you close it. You want less gas, you close it. This is your low speed, one screw. One turn. Turn it in. Back it out, one. Go from there when you got it idling. If it's surging, you may have to open it up a little bit. You may have to go one and a half turns. You have to fine tune it. And once you mess with these carburetors enough time, you'll get an ear for it and you'll be able to figure it out. And then when you got it idling, this is where you set your idle. If it's idling too low, you might have to turn it in, make it idle up a little bit. If it's idling too high, back it out. Put your new gasket on here if you need a new gasket. Hook your link up. Put the carburetor back on. All right, I'm going to put this air horn back on. I'm going to put this O-ring in here first. Then I'm going to put a little lubricant on it. Help it slide on. Got to hold all this up. Now I can put this screw in that's got the shoulder on it. Or this air horn. I call it an air horn. Maybe it's called something else. I like air horn. Beep beep, air horn. Now if it's all lined up, this bolt will go right in the bottom. Come on bolt. Come on, Bolt. Come on. Come on, little feller. There we go. I felt it. You should be able to get it in with your fingers. If not, you got to cross thread it. That's why a little bit of lubricant helps to slide that O ring on. All right. There it is. It's all back on. All you got to do is put the air filter on, put the blower housing back on. But that's all you really need to know about that two-piece flow jet carburetor. And there's your dinner. Slipper, you're back and you're full size. Oh man, it smelled terrible. Turns out whatever happened only lasted about 12 hours. I ended up about five miles out in the sewage pond. Had to crawl all the way back. What happened to Andy? Where's Andy at? I don't know what happened to Andy. We were both traveling down the same pipe. Then he caught a log off to the left, and I went towards the right, and that was the last I saw. I liked you better when you was tiny. Come on over here, Slippers, uh, by my machine. I'm gonna shrink you again. I don't think so, Terrell. I'm getting out of here. I need to get a fresh change of clothes. It's not terrible. I'll, I'll catch you later, all right? Okay, bye, Slippers. Yeah. What's this? Oh, Slippers coupon book. I guess Andy didn't steal it after all. This was the start of all this trouble. I know what to do with that. There's where that goes. <laughs>